If your family member is bald, will you be? The answer really is to just look at your mother's father and yeah, that's really it. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. The old wives tale of looking at your mother's father is not 100% accurate. And I want to explain a little bit about how genes work to you. Each cell has a nucleus and each nucleus contains chromosomes. Each chromosome contains genes. Genes make up your DNA and DNA determines which proteins are made in your body and which proteins aren't. And proteins are really important because they really control everything. For example, the proteins that make the hair will determine whether or not you have hair or whether you don't have hair. In a healthy human, each cell of the human body contains 23 pairs of chromosomes. The last pair of chromosomes is what I want you to focus on. This pair of chromosomes determines your gender. They're otherwise known as the sex chromosomes. And because it's a pair, it contains two chromosomes. It either contains two X chromosomes or an X and a Y chromosome. If it's two X chromosomes, then the gender of that cell or of that human is female. If it contains an X and a Y chromosome, then the gender is male. So why is it important to know a little bit about chromosomes and genes? Well, that's because this paper found that the gene that codes for the androgen receptor in the body, I'm sure most of you know that androgen receptors are located in the hair follicles, and it's generally accepted that androgen receptors are heavily involved in the progression of male pater baldness because DHT binds to those androgen receptors, causes miniaturization of the follicles, and eventually the hair falls out. So this gene that codes for the androgen receptors actually is one of the most important genes involved in the progression of male pattern baldness. In fact, this paper found that 46% of people with this particular gene for this androgen receptor will experience male pattern baldness. And this gene for the AR receptor is located on the X chromosome. And again, if you're a man, then you only have one X chromosome in your sex chromosome pair because you have X and Y chromosomes. Because a man always receives his X chromosome in that pair from his mother, during fertilization, the egg is what provides the X chromosome and the sperm from the man or the father provides the Y chromosome. The X chromosome comes from the mother and the Y chromosome comes from the father. So really, you're inheriting the particular gene for the AR receptor that is located on the X chromosome. You're inheriting that from your mother since you're inheriting your mother's X chromosome always if you're a man. Therefore, this balding AR gene actually comes from your mother. And this is how the old wife's tale of looking at your mother's father is the best way to determine whether you'll be bald. This is where it came from. I want to introduce this family tree to you to illustrate what I mean. Take Gary here. Gary's a little bit concerned that he will go bald. So as we mentioned, because Gary is male, he has XY chromosome. His mother Jane has XX chromosome because she's female. Her mother and her father gave her her chromosomes. So her mother is going to have XX chromosomes and her father is going to have XY chromosomes. Again, every man has XY chromosomes. Now her father or Gary's grandfather happens to be bald. And say he's bald because he has this particular gene we talked about coding for the androgen receptor. Jane, Gary's mother, has XX chromosomes. She, that means that she inherited one X chromosome from her mother and one X chromosome from her father. So she would have inherited the X chromosome containing that uh, balding AR gene from her father. And because Gary inherited his X chromosome from his mother to form his XY chromosomes, there's a 50% chance that he could have got the X chromosome from Jane, his mother, that contains the balding AR gene from her father or Gary's grandfather, then there's a 50% chance that Gary could have got the other X chromosome of Jane's that she got from her mother that doesn't contain the balding AR gene. So overall, Gary has a 50% chance of inheriting that balding AR gene that his grandfather has. And because we said that if you have this balding AR gene that you have a 46% chance of experiencing male pattern baldness, the fact that there's a 50% chance that Gary has the balding AR gene from the X chromosome of his grandfather, who is bald, and the fact that if he has that uh, balding AR gene, that he has a 46% chance of going bald, 50% of 46% is 23%. Meaning that really, despite the old wives tale, if your grandfather is bald because of this particular balding AR gene, then you only really have a 23% chance of being bald. So we know that the old wives tale is not 100% accurate, but there is a little bit more to the genetics of male pattern baldness. Again, I wanna quickly return to the basics of genetics. Each chromosome has parts on it, and these parts are called loci. A singular loci is called a locus, and the locus, again, is just a part of a chromosome. Each locus has within it DNA, and this is different in pretty much everyone. Although there are some parts of DNA that me and you share, 
we can call these SMPs. So SMPs, or what we often call them SNPs, are just parts of DNA that commonly occur. And that means that both me and you could have some of the same SNPs. Why are SNPs important? Well, we have a paper from Hagenars et al. who identified 331 SNPs from other chromosomes. So chromosomes outside of the X chromosome that has received most of the attention so far. Outside of the X chromosome, he identified 330 SNPs or 331 SNPs um, in the Y chromosome and um, even in the non-sex chromosomes, which we call autosomes. And he linked those to male pattern baldness. For example, if Gary has both the balding AR gene from his great-grandfather, as well as a lot of these other SNPs linked to male pattern baldness in other chromosomes of his, well, he has a very high chance of experiencing male pattern baldness. And these SNPs don't necessarily come from your mother's father or your grandfather. They can come from your dad, they can come from your mum, your mum's mum or your mum's dad. They really can come from anyone in the family. So these researchers trained a prediction model to identify 117 of these 331 SNPs um, in the genomes of, of around about 100,000 people. And they were able to predict um, severe male pattern baldness with 72% accuracy. This is not actually as good as eye color, uh, which the paper says uh, can be predicted with about, around about a 94% accuracy. But that sounds great. Um, that kind of t tells us that that kind of suggests we can predict uh, severe male pattern baldness with a 72% accuracy. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. This is quite a complex predictive model and it's not readily available to the public. So really all we have to test our genetics is genetic testing, basic genetic testing in the form of trico tests. And unfortunately, the main drawback about trico tests is they look at very few SNPs. And that's very, very limiting because if you're only looking at a few SNPs and there's loads of SNPs linked to male pattern baldness, well then you're not gonna get an accurate uh, prediction. We said that there's 331 SNPs linked to male pattern baldness. So if it's only looking at three, it's really not gonna be very accurate really. In summary, what we need to um, predict male pattern baldness with 100% accuracy. First of all, we would need to know every single part of the DNA increases your chance of experiencing male pattern baldness. So we need to know every single SNP. Whilst we know about 331 SNPs, there may be more out there. So we need to know all of them to be 100% sure of whether or not you will experience male pattern baldness. We also need a genetic test that is able to analyze all of these SNPs. Of course, this genetic test would need to also test for our balding ARG, which increases our chance of balding by 46%. And this would need to be readily available to the public to use. And of course, not cost millions of dollars. What I might suggest is that we instead focus on finding the main SNPs that increase your risk of baldness the most. We've done quite a good job of finding that balding AR gene which increases your risk of male pattern baldness by 46%, but we don't yet have other SNPs or other parts of our genes that we know increase our risk of male pattern baldness by a significant amount. For example, if we had a genetic test that could test for the balding AR gene and a handful of SNPs that perhaps together contribute to your risk of male pattern baldness by say 30, 40%, 46 plus 40%, we could have around about a 80 to 90% accuracy in our genetic test if we just knew a handful of SNPs as well as an AR gene, if we were just able to predict whether or not you have the AR gene as well as those really important SNPs. And that would render all those hundreds of other SNPs not as important. So this would be pretty good. Until this happens, why not check out my other video on how I'm able to predict how much hair you might lose in the future based on my experience of seeing thousands of patients experiencing male pattern baldness, which currently is a much simpler and cheaper way of predicting whether you will go bald or not. To answer the question, if a member of your family is bald, will you go bald as well? Maybe. It really depends on what particular genetics the person or people in your family who are bald have. For example, if it's your grandfather and he is positive for the balding AR gene, then you might be lucky and it might bypass your generation, or you might get it and you have quite a significantly increased risk of balding. However, if he's only bald because he has some of those SNPs, well then, you know, they might not be as strong to cause male pattern baldness, and so you might only experience mild hair loss. However, it's, it's pretty unlikely because of just how common the SNPs are in, in, um, amongst the population, it's very unlikely that any man um, truly escaped hair loss. 80% of men experience some degree of hair loss by the age of 80. So it kind of just shows that the SNPs are really kind of intertwined in almost everyone with a lucky 20% not experiencing any hair loss at all and probably not having any the balding AR gene or the SNPs. So the chances are that you probably have um, a greater number of SNPs and possibly the um, balding AR gene if there's lots of people in your family that are bald. And so really, 
um, it's definitely worth knowing this because it will allow you to understand or decide whether you want to take finasteride and get ahead of the hair loss before it happens because it's always easier to prevent hair loss than treat it once it's happened. And I think knowing whether or how likely you are to become bald through your family members would be really, really valuable for a lot of people because of that. But unfortunately, more research is needed to give an exact percentage of how likely a given person is to become bald if they have a member of their family who is bald. Guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope this helped you understand a little bit more about the genetics of male pattern baldness and how we still have quite a far way to go. Um, if you're interested in having a consultation with me, don't hesitate to contact me on my email at drpreces at gmail.com. If you want a consultation where we can discuss the specifics of your genetics in terms of hair loss and whether or not you're on the right medications or whether or not you'd be suitable for a hair transplant, um, don't hesitate to book, again, a consultation with me over email or you can do so through fellermedical.com. Mention my name in the inquiry page.